and thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Sasha Reed. If you've not come and seen me before on my channel, then welcome, and I'm really happy you're joining me. Tonight we're going to have some fun and we are going to play with colors. Now when I use color combinations, I really suck at working out what goes well together. And I thought I'd share this little tip with you. I usually go online on Google and just type in color combinations. Then I print out the colors that I really like and find my ink pads to match. So I got out pretty much almost all my ink pads and I had them all on my desk and I stacked them into piles of the colors I liked and then that way I'm ready to rock and roll when it comes time to crafting. So I'm just sharing with you here all the ink pad color combinations that I kind of went for in today's video plus a couple extra which you'll see towards the end. And what we're going to do is just have a bunch of fun. We're not going to think too much or too hard about it. We're just picking out colors we like, the colors we like the looks of, and then we are going to create some projects. Now for my project today, I'm going to use some finger daubers. These are the main ones that I'm working with today. They're a really good sponge that doesn't seem to disintegrate or fall apart, unlike some of the cheaper ones I've bought in the past. I'm also going to label them as I go because I keep forgetting to do this, and then I don't know which color goes with which ink dauber, and I thought actually, if I just stick on the name of the dauber, then I can find the color and the dauber really quickly. Now there's no rhyme, no reason as to where and why I'm putting down the colors. I am just taking the three lightest colors and in most of my combinations I've tried to have light colors and one really dark color and you'll see why in a second. For the combinations that don't have a dark color involved in them, I use black. Now I'm just putting down some ink, I'm kind of smudging it all together, you don't need perfect lines, you don't need nice blending. We are going to pick stamps that have thin lines so that the colour is popping through but we're not getting the mess if that makes sense, so you can be as messy as you like. Now I have this clear embossing powder and I always decant it into a smaller container because if, I don't know if you're like me, but I tend to forget to empty out the colour properly before out of my little purple container there and sometimes I'll end up with like black in my clear or sometimes I'll drop glitter in it or whatever the case may be. I just decant it into a little container and then I add more as I need rather than using that whole entire container and messing it up. Now I'm taking some clear embossing ink and some clear embossing powder and if you don't have a large background stamp like the one I'm using here which is from Alina's shop then you can go ahead and use a bunch of little stamps and just stamp them down and do the same thing. All we're doing is creating a background and we are using a clear embossing ink to make sure that the ink in the background shows through. So this is the most thick stamp that I've got in today's video. Most of them are very thin lines but I wanted to share with you it still looks really cool with the thicker stamps as long as it's not too thick. Now here I've got the Uncharted Marina which is the new Tim Holtz colour and I'm going over the whole entire thing with my ink dauber and the really dark ink. So now you can see the only ink showing is the ink that we put down underneath that embossing powder. So I'm sure you've seen this technique before, it's an oldie bit of goody, but we are taking just random colour blobbies and putting them down on our card front and creating a fun pattern behind of colour. So we, we don't necessarily want the pattern, we're not looking for a cool pattern, we're just looking to put the colour down and then use a stamp that's going to make that colour pop back through. So once you're satisfied with all your colours and you've covered up all the white, unless you do want a bit of white showing, you can then go ahead and stamp your image on. So I have another large background stamp. Unfortunately this one is 6x6 six six, so it's not quite tall enough for my card. So by the end I do go ahead and trim down that card front a little bit just to allow for my stamp to appear like it's fully covered the background. This is a really cute pretty one but again it's a really nice thin line. So I stamped it with the embossing ink and put my clear embossing powder over the top and then when we go to apply the darker ink which in this case is the Villainous Potion so it's a really dark purple, it then covers up all that ink on the cardstock apart from our embossed areas. Now one good thing to point out is that you do want a juicy ink pad. So I'm re-inking it so it's less effort. You want to put down quite a heavy amount of ink. You want to really get some full coverage in the background. So using uh, an ink refiller if you do not have enough ink on your ink pad is a really good idea. Now if you need to polish it off because the ink is sticking a bit, you can just grab a nice light cloth or a paper towel and you can just wipe that ink off. Now just to say I am using dye ink 
and that is the key ink to be using. If you're using pigment ink, it will stick to the embossing powder or to the yeah to the embossed areas. It won't look as nice. You do want a dye ink, which is water soluble. It comes off nice and easy. Now you can use decorative paper if all you've got. Uh, in your stash is decorative paper that you want to use up. You can go ahead and use these pattern papers as your color underneath your embossing. So for example, let's say you don't have very many ink pads and you need to make use of what you've got in your stash, then you can use designer papers. Just be aware that they don't the ink doesn't stick to it as well as when it's just solid cardstock. So they've obviously treated the paper, um, put some kind of something on the paper to make that color really stick out. So when you go ahead and put that black ink on top, you will still see the pattern showing through the black. And I do have to buff it off a bit because it's sticking, the black sticks to that embossing ink a little bit, the embossing powder a little bit. So I do rub it with a cloth, which then makes it even lighter on the paper so you can see that pattern showing through. It's not the end of the world. It still will look cool. You'll still see that pattern really clearly through the embossing ink. You just end up seeing the pattern in the paper a bit more. Maybe if you left it for a while to dry, and then removed and buffed off the embossed area, you wouldn't get that showing through quite so much. But I think because there's a lot of ink into that uh, cardstock or paper that's in the background, it's going to be a bit difficult. So you can see those lines kind of showing through, but it's kind of numbed them out with that black ink. So there on the left is one where we created the pattern, and on the right is the one where we used the pattern paper. And this is the same stamp on both of those. You can see it's just a bit more fun when you've kind of put that color down, but you can use designer paper if that's what you've got. Now for my one that I did with Happy Birthday, I felt like I used too dark of a blue and my Happy Birthday was getting a bit lost. So I've gone in with my Arteza acrylic paint pen and I'm just going to color in the Happy Birthday to kind of make that sentiment pop. This is the only one where I used a sentiment stamp rather than just an image in the background and it looks quite nice however it's quite fun to play around and work out what looks good what doesn't and obviously using a dark blue ink didn't quite have the same effect because when I covered it with the black it then kind of lost the effect of the stamp so if I would put lots of colors that were quite light underneath, it would have been a better idea. But we live and we learn and we have fun making cards. So these are all my finished cards. I've only got a couple left to finish off. I put some metallic twine behind most of my sentiments and I used my new sentiment and stamp set from Craft Stash. I'll link them down below. I'll try and link everything I can down below. Some of the stamps I used are no longer in stock, but if they are, I will put them down below for you. So I had lots of fun. I created quite a few different cards, put a nice little simple sentiment on the front and kind of finished them off. So I hope you had a really fun time with me tonight and enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you have a go as well. I'll leave some links down below if you want to tag me on Instagram or join me in my Facebook group. Take care and have a fabulous week. I will see you on Saturday night for some Saturday night crafting. Bye for now.